Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I will recap one of an action thriller films from 2021, titled Every Last One of Them. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film begins by showing a man named Jack Hunter, he is on his way to a bar located in a city in California. Jake appears to be on the lookout for someone, rather than enjoying the strippers performing at the bar. While Jake is drinking beer he is suddenly teased by one of the strippers, even though he is uninterested in it at the time. But when the two of them are conversing, a young man named Bobby approaches them, and appears to be uncomfortable with the man's presence in the bar. Bobby also claims that he is the one who runs this joint, and gets angrier when he sees Jake simply ignores him and chooses to leave. At this point, Bobby doesn't stop making fun of Jake, and invites Jake to a duel which causes quite a commotion. Not long after, several police officers arrive and secure the area. One of them is Ben, and at this moment they simply let Bobby and the others go, and take Jake to the police station. Let's go, move it! At the police station, Jake is interrogated by Ben who is actually not a police officer, but looks more domineering than the other two cops. In fact, Ben doesn't like the arrival of new people in his town, and when he tries to find out who Jake is, the man remains silent. He appears to be hiding something and has a certain motive for stopping by the joint last night. A few moments later, the interrogation is cut short when Ben's sister named Maggie suddenly calls, and asks him to come home because she has prepared food for him. The man then leaves the room, ordering the two police officers there to force Jack to open his mouth. Not sure what kind of authority this man possesses, but what is clear that the two policemen there are completely obedient to him. They even wrap up Jack's head and make it difficult for him to breathe, just to get information from the man about his motives for coming to the city. Fortunately, the commotion in the interrogation room caught the attention of another police officer named Kim. Kim then scolds them, telling them that this case is a responsibility, and that the way they're acting is against police station protocol. When Kim releases the handcuffs, Jack quickly grabs the gun from Kim's body, and threatens the officer so he can get out of the police station. He tells Kim he isn't going to kill her because all he wanted is to get out of there. Jake then takes Kim's car keys and immediately drives away from the place in the police car. We then move to Ben, Ben who has just arrived at his house comes to Bobby, who turns out to be his own son. When Ben approaches him with a question, the young man claims that he didn't know anything about Jake. After that, Ben inquires as to why that man in the club has this girl's photo. Ben wants Bobby to think really hard with his weed-soaked brain, but he can only remain silent because he has no idea who that man is. Jake on the other hand, makes a brief stop in the middle of his way, to check the trunk which has a weapon in it. He also responds to Jen's handy talkie which asks him to return to the police station. At this moment, Jake seems to reveal his purpose in coming to the city, by stating that he just wanted to find out what had happened to his daughter. Still on the same day, Ben and Maggie are now meeting with their superior named Bert, to meet with some investors, and discuss the largest aquifer business in the Southwest. During the brief conversation, investors seems very interested in the business concept developed by Ben and Bert. Plus, Ben as vice president believes that the large aqueduct under the sand dune, will facilitate his business practice, which has the potential to bring in billions of dollars in profits during the hot weather. After a meeting with all of the investors, they are determined to ensure that Ben's business does not fail this time around. Maggie then suddenly reminds Ben to be careful with Jake because they don't want anyone to mess with their billion dollar business. But just as Maggie enters the house, Jack appears out of nowhere and points his gun directly at Ben. He seems to have figured something out as he wants to speak with Bobby. When Bobby shows up, Jake realizes he's doing the right thing as he notices Bobby wearing a bracelet that belonged to his daughter, Melissa. Jack then keeps pointing the gun at them, while asking about his daughter whose whereabouts are currently unknown. In this panic state, the young man finally admits that he didn't meant to hurt Melissa when they were partying together previously. He begins telling Jake about what happened the previous night. When they were having fun, Bobby gave Melissa a shot of drugs, causing her to overdose. Bobby isn't given enough time to tell more about her, because Jake fires his rifle at Bobby right away. Meanwhile, 
Maggie heard the commotion and rushes out with her rifle, shooting Jake multiple times. I want it fucking it! Jake is now hit by a shot in the body, and running into the oil palm plantation. During Jake's escape, he is pursued by several corrupt people, who have been protecting Ben's business, as well as serving as his personal bodyguard. Jake is now engaged in gunfire with a group of bad guys led by Stone. He still manages to kill some of them. Stone then calls the police station to request some help and asks Bartlett to meet him there. Once Bartlett arrived there, he looks terrified and refuses to get involved after witnessing the death of one of the force members. The cop is then caught by Jake but he is not killed, since Bartlett admits that he is just a regular cop, not as corrupt as the others. Knowing Bartlett is Kim's partner, Jake leaves a message to Bartlett to tell Kim his current location. He then decides to rest in a hut he found in the area, where he spends the night treating the gunshot wounds on his shoulder. Jake is also reminiscing about his daughter and ex-wife, whom he had always left behind when he was called to duty. From here it is revealed that Jake was once a soldier, who did some kind of black ops work. Melissa was very disappointed because Jake always abandoned her, and never told her where he was going all the time. In his memory, Jake was also saying goodbye to Murphy who was his superior in the military. It turns out that Jake had decided to end his career in the military, because he couldn't bear to constantly abandon his wife and children. The man clearly feels a deep sense of regret, where he also recalls how he had left his daughter with one of his close friends named Bill. He did so because Melissa was known to have developed a drug addiction at the time. Therefore, Jake simply dropped off his daughter at Bill's place, and hoped that Bill could take her away from her dreadful life. Ben on the other hand, is still grieving the recent loss of his son and is now even more stressed, as Bert suddenly comes and reminds him to make sure the chaos that happened would not be known to outsiders. Especially to investors because they could run away and make his business plan fail. Meanwhile, Bartlett who has just arrived at the police station, immediately informs Kim of what had just happened at the plantation. He informs Kim that Jake had simply let him go, and had left a message for her informing her of his whereabouts. As a result, Kim becomes even more suspicious of all the motives behind Jake's actions. The following day, while Maggie is cooking in the kitchen, she notices that a helicopter has arrived at their residence. It turns out the person is Murphy, who already knows about Jake, and they also have no idea who Murphy is. Murphy explains that Ben has no other choice anymore, and must tell Jake the truth about what he's been looking for. The old man also reminds Ben that the person he is currently dealing with is not an ordinary person, but a former subordinate in Murphy's special forces team. Plus, he will not stop and will continue to hunt Ben, until he gets all of the answers he is looking for. Even so, Ben who is basically adamant and used to dealing with the criminal world, doesn't seem to really care about Murphy's words. Ben instead claims to kill Jake himself, and has placed his trust in his men to track him down. Back to Jake, he has now fallen asleep in the hut, and is being woken up by Ben's men who have found him. Jack is then severely beaten by them. But with all of his strength, he is able to turn things around and shoots all of the men there. After Jake clears everything up, Kim has now arrived at the location by following the coordinates provided by Bartlett. Jake then tells Kim that he knows Ben and his men are aware of what happened to his daughter. Plus, he asks Kim to help him to hunt down the people involved. Kim, who already aware that Ben is a corrupt individual before, returns to her office to check the list of recently reported missing persons. She also postponed her intention to apprehend Jack, while she worked out the details of the case. Meanwhile, Stone who has been tied by Jake, begins to be bombarded with questions about Melissa. Although Stone initially refuses to tell Jack about it, but Jack keeps forcing him by putting a knife to his neck. In the end, Stone admits all of his actions by telling Jake the day on which the incident occurred. One night, he was assigned with keeping an eye on Bobby, who was partying with Melissa. This is when he discovered and raped Melissa who had overdosed on Bobby's drugs, but he tells that Ben is the one who killed her. When Jake knows that her daughter has died, he can't hold back his rage any longer and stabs Stone in the neck with his knife. After that, Jake is crying hard as he knows what has actually happened to his daughter, and that he has failed to be a good father. At the same time, Kim has just arrived at the police station, 
where she meets Murphy who will assist her in hunting down and speaking with his former military subordinates. The scene then moves to their past, where Bill is telling Jake that Melissa has gone away from his house. Bill knows where she is going and who she is with, so this is how Jake learns about Melissa's presence in this town. The police officers and Murphy are now discussing their strategy, and Jake calls the radio shortly after where he begins to talk with Murphy. At this point, Jake starts telling Murphy that he's doing all of this because of Melissa's death, and that he still hasn't gotten the answers he's been looking for. Murphy suddenly shows an expression full of resentment and sadness, as he knows what has happened to Jake's daughter. Another unexpected fact, it turns out that Jake is not only Murphy's subordinate soldier, but he is also Murphy's own son. That means Jake's desire for vengeance against all of Ben's men, is now for the sake of Murphy's granddaughter. Murphy now knows that Jake will insanely come back to attack all of them, and that there is nothing he can do to prevent it. So he asks Kim and the others to gear up, and not to shoot Jake no matter what the circumstances. Now their headquarters area has been heavily guarded by many soldiers, who are waiting Jake's arrival. The battle this time is unavoidable, and Jake now appears to be in for a tough fight, especially with the corrupt group present. Jake manages to kill the bad guys one by one, but at one point he is hit by a grenade, causing him to sustain severe injuries. As a result, he decides to retreat in a nearby church. Murphy is monitoring from the police station, and he receives word that Jake is now heading to an abandoned church. So he decides to go directly to the location along with Kim and Bartlett. While they are on their way, Murphy suddenly tells Kim to stop the car, because he sees Jake who appears out of nowhere with wounds. Jake then gets into the car and tells them to go to Ben's house. We move to Ben, who is now spending his time near his park on the lake's edge, reflecting on his previous actions. Maggie then returns to their house, followed by Ben not long after. And imagine how surprised he is when he found Maggie who has been taken hostage by Jake. At this moment, Jake forces Ben to reveal what had really happened to Melissa. But the man still refuses and says that he didn't know anything about Jake's daughter. Jake who has grown tired of all the nonsense, breaks Maggie's fingers, prompting Ben to finally reveal all the truth about what has been happening. This is the point at which the bad guy reveals that Melissa was still alive at the time Bobby brought her home. Moreover, she had just woken up at the time of the incident, and was in a semi-conscious state due to an overdose. But the panic that had erupted at the time had led Ben to decide to kill the girl, by immersing her in a lake and then completely forgetting about the incident. In fact, the evil act was also witnessed by Maggie but she simply walked away. Ben had no idea that his confession has been heard through the device brought by Jake. Therefore, the three of them then rush to Ben's house with the rest of the police. While under the police siege, Ben thinks Jake has no other choice but to surrender as well as take him out. At this point, Jake is eager to kill the two of them in front of everyone. But Murphy keeps reminding Jake that killing those two people won't bring his daughter back. In the end, the old man then orders all police officers to arrest Ben and Maggie. Both of them are surprised because they thought the police would arrest Jake, but now their own wrongdoings have been exposed as well. Kim feels sorry for what had happened to Jake's daughter, and informs him that help is on the way. At the end of the film, Bartlett who is transporting Ben and Maggie, is suddenly stopped by a car. Bartlett then gets out of the police car without saying a word, and walks away from the vehicle. After that, someone approaches the car, and both of them are forced to face Murphy. Okay guys, that's all the recap for every last one of them 2021. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.